And now, from the dark corners of the internet, where exploits run wild, packets aren't the only things getting sniffed, and the beer flows steady, it's Paul Security Weekly! Podcast brought to you by the SANS Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training, certification, and research. Visit them on the web at sans.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jump start your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution at tenable.com. And by Black Squirrel. Pen test networks from your browser. Exploit the limits of network security through just a browser. Have a Chrome exploit in your toolkit. Good. But for the rest of us, there's Black Squirrel. Visit blacksquirrel.io for more information. Now it's time to fire up a packet capture, pour yourself an adult beverage, and give the intern control of your classic old botnet because here's your host. He's a man who manages to identify every white whale in the security podcast industry and whose wildest key signing party involved a 55-gallon drum of lube, a midget, lemons, and a man nicknamed Old Dick, Paul Asadorian. Welcome, everyone, to this edition of Security Weekly. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. I am just so happy to be here tonight. We're going to have so much fun. This is episode 407 for February 19th, 2015. It, it, pay attention, because this is going to be epic. I'm going to get to announcements really quick, because I'm so excited that you could probably smell it. How excited I am <laughs> for this episode. I just wonder what that was. And I, and um, I, and I thought it was your feet. <laughs> so, securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Check out our class, Embedded Device Security Assessments for the rest of us. It's being featured next week at the SANS ICS Summit. So next week, no podcast. What? And then. No, yeah, no pocket. And then uh, it's going to be a black hat. So that securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Make sure you go there. Sign up for the class. If you do the black hat class, you get access to the vendor area at the black hat briefings, the arsenal talks, and a couple of other things. Um, so you don't get full ac and access. And free T-shirts. Free T-shirts. You said that last Free hack naked T-shirts for everyone who attends the black hat class. You get a USB thumb drive. And <clears throat> at least for this last class, they were gold and shiny, which was kind of interesting. Nice. It was very blingy. Nice. So make sure you check that out, securityweekly.com forward slash IOT. Uh, Security Week listeners receive 10% off products in our store with the discount code IHACKNAKED. Larry's teaching SANS Wireless 617 ethical hacking defense coming up. Orlando, Austin, Texas, Baltimore, and Berlin, Germany with more to follow after that. So make sure you check the SANS site for Larry's classes because it's awesome. Besides yes. Boston 2015 is May 9th in Cambridge, Mass. Got a great topic or a fresh new idea? Share it with the community at Besides Boston 2015. Call for papers is now open. If they do accept my talk that I'm giving at Besides or going to give if they accept my talk, it is going to be epic. It'll be the first time I will ever give a talk. It is a brand new talk. It's the first time you'll ever give a talk? It, well, of this, this kind, okay. this particular talk. It's brand uh, new. Of this caliber, right, Paul? Of this, it's going to be, it's going to be epic. I won't even spoil it with the title. The title. Just, do you want well, the title? Yes. You know you want the title. Just that's it. I gotta look up the title. Like it's the title. It took me a long time to come up with this title. I had to meditate. It was very, very difficult. Robots, ninjas, pirates, and building an effective vulnerability management program. So I coupled the boring speak with robots, ninjas, and pirates. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. Tell me more about these robots, ninjas, and pirates. Yes, <laughs> and we'll have to come to the top if it gets accepted. I don't know if it's official that it's there yet. So. We'll How see. can you not yeah. accept a talk with a title like that? <laughs> I, you know, I think you had. Me, I told you, you had me at, at robots vulnerability <laughs> management program. <laughs> <laughs> so sexy. <laughs> see that? Or I'm just an asshole. Say it to me again, Larry. Say, say it again. Vulnerability say it. management program. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's feeling so vulnerable. <laughs> Whew, I'm all hot and bothered now, Larry. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Man, so, I need a Sprite. <laughs> um, Chris, do we have our guest for this? Oh, 
No, we don't have our. We're gonna get our guest back at some point. No, wait, near. Paul, you gotta introduce us, man. Come on. Oh, uh, so this is Larry, and that's Joff. They're gonna be integral parts of this next segment on the show. <laughs> I'm certainly, very. I'm certainly hope I'm, so. I'm not gonna touch your integral parts, and maybe oh. maybe after the segment. But I was gonna say because that could get weird if you're gonna touch yes. Josh's inter- Joff's integral parts. So obviously, yeah. Larry's here. Joff, if you could do that at 300 miles, I'd be impressed. I'll, I'll say, hey, guys, hey I'll look, he's got his winter hat on like me and everything. Welcome to winter. It's winter. At yes, the park, the car, in the garage. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, park the car in Harvard Yard. It is ungodly cold <laughs> down is. here in the south. It was like it negative five in Tennessee the other night. I was talking to my friend. That's yeah. cold. Wait, yeah. you have friends? They do. Lies. Here in, here in uh, um, North Carolina, it's supposed to be two degrees tonight, so. Nice. nice. It's about the same time we're supposed to be here tonight, too. And what a better night than to introduce this segment. We've, been, we've right, talked. Well, right. Well, so why do we have this segment? Well, because Chris didn't book our guests properly, and so they didn't <laughs> show up. Hey, he's giving you the New Jersey salute. <laughs> you know, some guests are more difficult to get oh than others, and it just it happens they, that way. They, they, they wouldn't be a white whale until they make you it have on the to, day you gotta, they schedule them and they don't show the first time. Don't get disheartened, Chris. Stick with it, and it's, it'll be rewarding in the end. But So we had to come up with a segment on the fly. I came up with this crazy idea the other night that we should do. We didn't have a name for it. I think um, Audio Guy Steve, I, we should you know, have got a camera so we could. Audio Guy Steve, LA Steve, or Audio Guy Steve, we use those two terms interchangeably. It's here in the studio, which is awesome. And no, not that Steve. He flew not from L.A. Not that Steve. Different Steve. He flew from L.A. to here, where there was nice warm weather in L.A. and came here to help us configure audio. No way. And L.A. Stuff. Yeah. Steve's yeah. in the studio? L.A. Steve's in the studio. Uh, uh, so we were on a call, and I came with – well, Steve came with the, uh, the title called Security Deathmatch. What the hell does that mean? I said, you know what would be fun? People in security have really strong feelings about – Certain topics. Right in the fields. And it would be really fun to bring back some of our previous guests and do, I guess, what we're going to term security deathmatch and ask them to argue one or you know one way or the other on a particular topic. Now, Larry and Joff haven't had this much prep time. That's uh, okay. They, in fact, this is probably the first Joff is hearing of this segment. <laughs> <laughs> and Joff, don't worry. Yes. I only heard about it two it's minutes ago. It's easy, dude. Just uh, yep. play along. You pick a side and you give your thoughts on various topics, which I'm about to <laughs> doesn't read off. It doesn't even have to be the right side. No. <laughs> whatever side, side you want. Yeah. And whatever <laughs> side Joff picks Larry's going to argue the opposite. Yeah, no way. Whatever. No way. Or not. Is there a right side? <laughs> We're going to figure it out. And I want to call this segment, I love Steve's idea, Security Deathmatch. Now, no one will be harmed or die in the filming of this segment. I can't say that for future segments, but for this one, since the first one. Okay. Is everyone ready? We need security deathmatch music. This yeah, we, need a, we need a buzzer. <laughs> yeah, we need no, some Steve, buzzer. Steve, what was that sound clip you had about this is going to be really bad? <laughs> Oh, this is bad. <laughs> no, this is good. This is security deathmatch. All right. Larry and Joff, my two contestants, are yeah, you guys ready? Never. But Not at all. All right. I'm going to start off with an easy one for you both to kind of get you warmed up in this right, first round. Time. Is there multiple rounds? Okay. Well, okay. Whatever. Yes. Round. So, yeah, round one. VI. No, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, <sighs> what's the format? Are we talking Jeopardy format here? There's no format, Job. I throw out a topic <laughs> and you guys debate it. That's, okay. It's a All death right, go, match. Go. There's no rules, Job. <laughs> go, hurry up. Death All right. VI versus NMAP. I will give. You mean Emacs. Uh, what did I say? NMAP. You said NMAP. What? You, you know what? Can kill we just. The host. Kill the host. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> Well, that would All be right, an interesting debate. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, security deathmatch round one, take two. <laughs> VI versus Emacs. Larry, go. I'm going to take Emacs on this one. Wow. And the only reason why I would say Emacs, because when someone else sits down to use your computer and edit a file, they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Like that you know one what? time at CCDC. Neither do I. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joff, you got the easy one. You got the easy one, Joff. Yes, I will take VI, which, like God, everybody should have. 
<laughs> and in fact, every POSIX-based operating system on the planet does. <laughs> hey, you, you show me. Oh, wait, I'm getting warmed up too early. Uh, I don't know. Larry, you want to go first? What do you, what, what, where are we going to start with this? Uh, that was my argument for Emacs, is that when someone sits down to use your text editor, they have no idea what the hell they're doing. Okay, well, I, I would say that that argument applies to VI as well, but in fact... <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I'd be sort of agreeing with you. But um, I mean, who the fuck invents an editor where you hit fucking 500 different control keys to do anything? Emacs just sucks the big one. Uh, wait, I thought you were talking about VI for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least in VI, you can do colon S slash. That's like five keys. Slash G slash return dollar dot. Dollar up carrot G and then everything is done. <laughs> All right, so what's the problem? <laughs> now, Joff, arrow keys or letters for navigation in VI? Look, you, he, wait, 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 wait. You said VI, not VI improved. No, put... no VI. Okay, arrow, arrow keys blow, right? <laughs> VI was invented. VI was invented before arrow keys <laughs> even existed. So you no arrow keys on keyboards. You put your four fingers on the H, J, the K, and the L, and you move around like God intended you to. <laughs> what the fuck is the problem with that? They, did, they didn't have arrow keys in Australia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> arrow keys weren't invented in Australia. No. I mean, that's right. That, that VT-52 <laughs> terminal had too much fucking chewing gum. <laughs> they were export restricted. <laughs> they were, they were a munition. <laughs> so you use the H, J, K, and L like you should. Oh, shit. I you still have a bird over here. Oh, oh, my God. All okay. right. <laughs> 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 All right, oh. are we are we ready for round two? We'll go to something a little more. That was just kind of a warm up. <laughs> Believe it or not, <laughs> we'll go to something more security related topic next. How's that? Yeah, this is where I I dive off the cliff. And All right. <laughs> okay. Firewalls versus actually hardening your systems. Oh. Joff, mm -hmm. I'll turn it to you first. Okay, I'm going with fi I'm going with uh, hardening your systems, uh, not with firewalls. You can blow your firewall right out your rear end, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you know, when it comes down to operating systems, why in God's green earth don't people look at the services running on them and turn them off? I mean, for Christ's sake, you get anything out of the box, it's not going to be hardened, with save a, a small exception number of OSs like OpenBSD and such. You got to go through them, look at your net stat, turn off your services, do what you're supposed to but do. But job, some of those system. services are need needed. Firewall. I mean, come on, you got to have 135, 139, and 445 on your Windows systems to actually use them. Uh, no, you don't. Technically, you don't. <laughs> you, you may not want to join a domain. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Technically, you, you don't. <laughs> Usability, right? Yeah, yeah. usability. Yeah. Okay, so like you know, let's face it: the so-called stateful firewall on Windows is a piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really work that well. Okay, there are some stateful firewall <laughs> walls that work well. Um, I, okay, let me give Windows seven. So, so that would be a stateful firewall. Firewall. <laughs> <laughs> let me give Windows seven and up a Wells little bit of credit. Water. They've done a lot, a lot of work on tuning it. Okay. Here's the only reason I think... No, I'm going to make Larry's person. argument. Harden your systems. You don't need a firewall. The system needs to just be listening on the services that it's providing, period. That's it. The end. Mm. Great. Great. Larry. So, so, one, what? nobody does that shit. <laughs> 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 so, you got to have a firewall, and those services that are listening, you need to protect them from each other and from the internet at large. So, I will say a firewall, because that was the lot I was given in life. Um... But yeah, Joff, yeah, harden the systems. Only make certain services available. And what happens when that service has a vulnerability? Well, patch maybe it. There's <laughs> some thing, patch it. Yeah, there, maybe there's some things you can do there with uh, some deep inspection. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's my argument. Not nearly as fun as Joff's. Hey, so I, I'll, I'll give Larry a little bit of cred here. If you've got a system that's acting in a happy group with other systems and you want to have some internal segmentation on a network and you can control that firewall centrally, then firewalls, I think, may have a role to play. You don't necessarily have to internally segment um, using network gear. You can internally segment use, using a centrally managed firewall solution, right? Yep. So, 
See, Larry, I'm making your argument for you. That was it's wonderful. You, it's a sharing in the love that's sharing going on right care. now. It's just it's, it's in, a death match, no less. in a death match. In a death match, it's really Shit. hard. You know, I feel like I have to get really aggressive with this, Paul. You wound me up, man. I, I did. I, well, my next one was going to be segmentation versus no segmentation. Wow. Oh, I think we just covered that. <laughs> I think you did, too. Okay. Python versus Pearl. Ruby. Ruby, Pearl. Oh, you gotta pick one. Python or er, Erlang. Po- <laughs> <laughs> Go. Python versus Pearl versus Ruby versus Lua. What? Versus Cobol. <laughs> yeah, isn't isn't Lua one of those dances that happens at Hawaiian parties? <laughs> okay. I'm Python. Taking, I'm, I'm, I'm Python ta- versus Pearl versus Ruby. <laughs> I'm ta- go. I'm taking Python on this one. Oh, yeah, very <laughs> You're going to have to defend either Pearl or Ruby, Joff. Okay, so. Um, Come on, Joff. Pearl's self documenting. You could. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Pearl was self undocumenting. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a write only language. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll go with Pearl. Right only language. That's a completely correct statement. Once you do Pearl, you never do it again. Uh, that's the beauty of it. You get your ideas down, they're completely concrete, and they will never be modified again because it's not possible to ever modify them again. <laughs> and just, just like the good old language C of old, you could write the most complicated ball of shit in one line in Pearl that nobody will ever be able to read in the future and that is just a fantastically spectacular thing. Okay. And it works. It's like the, oh, e- it's like the it Emacs works. of programming languages. Uh, uh, so, okay. so Python, huge support. Lots of great community. Folks use it. I can somewhat understand it. There's lots of good modules. And, well... I can hear the choir. Yes. I can hear it's like, birds oh my gosh, chirping. Python. And I, and There's I, a rainbow in the s- studio right now. I suck at Python. <laughs> and still. Because you know why? I suck even more at Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I have to say that, you know, showing my age here, I have written multi-thousand lines of code in Pearl. In Cobol? In suit- <laughs> hey, can you guys click that <laughs> click the hang up button on Skype over there? Because, you know, he's out of here. <laughs> but... But to Larry's point, as soon as Python came came along, I ditched Pearl as fast as some of my ex girlfriends. <laughs> wow! So you you stuck around. That's almost yeah. as fast so, as so, they ditched you, Jeff. So, which so, is... so, he, so in other words, he stuck around and went out with them a couple more times, hoping yeah. for sex. <laughs> <laughs> And it never worked. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to do a couple of penetration tests using Pearl. <laughs> it, Still know. didn't work. <laughs> we tried to, he tried to do a couple of penetration tests out of scope, yeah. and it out didn't scope. work because it's because it, once you write it, it's, it's once you write it off, it's all done. All right. Wow. Yeah, and, and, right. and I've only got two children that I know of. <laughs> We'll continue doing kind of the non-security focus, but I would appreciate if you could relate it back to mm-hmm. security because I yeah, think yeah. This, this one's kind of uh, interesting, especially. Paul's Paul, raining on our parade. Chrome versus Firefox. Oh. I got Firefox. Go for it. All right, Firefox is the reference standard. It is, it is the code base against which all other things are measured versus Chrome being the, oh, my God, I'm going to track you to death. Thank you, Google, for building in all these non-privacy features, which are going to, you know, gain knowledge of every single thing you're doing. Um, point of order, I use Mozilla Firefox for all of my reference-based testing when I'm doing penetration tests, and then I validate against other browsers as needed because I do feel like Mozilla is a very accurate implementation of the standards. Uh, um, but I don't know. What else have I got to say? Not a lot. Go, Larry. So have you ever tried verifying cross-site scripting in Chrome? <coughs> I didn't think so, because it doesn't fucking work. Because <laughs> <laughs> they block that shit. So that means for the average user... Chrome is more secure is what you're saying. I would agree that Chrome may be more secure in that respect. It's a good thing that everyone in most of the environments that receive penetration testing mm-hmm. uses Internet Explorer, which I didn't put on the table. <laughs> yes, yes. Yet. Now, that said, for, for Chrome, I use both. I use Chrome I use and Firefox. Too. I use Firefox on my personal, and I use Chrome on my work machine. Um, I use both on the same laptop. And honestly, I have on my work, 
I have Chrome, Every browser, yeah. Firefox, and Safari. What about Opera? And, Opera? Um, that's on this machine. I have Opera, uh, Firefox, Chrome, and Opera. Safari on this machine. Mm. Interesting. I, I do validate uh, findings when I'm testing, usually at, with IE as a secondary reference from <laughs> Mozilla Firefox. Yeah. And to be to yeah. to example as an example, I have you will note, Paul, I have S Firefox open on this machine. I also currently have Safari open on this machine. I've met both of them at the same time. Browser wars. Actually, I will say the Chromium base is interesting in that some other browsers, especially the ones that are more privacy-focused, have emerged um, lately. Uh, for example, I've been using Epic, which uh, I'm nice. I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of impressed with Epic. Mm. Um, but that is a Chrome-based browser. So, uh. Yep, and there was, there was another one many years ago that I attempted to go use. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go check out this new browser, and I fired up, and it's fucking Firefox. With, I'm like, uh, oh, it's not what I wanted. Okay. I do tend to like the plugin base in Firefox from the pen testing perspective. Yeah. Things things like uh, Wappalizer, things like uh, <coughs> What uh, is Wappalizer? A Wappalizer is a uh, an attempted a plugin that attempts to uh, identify remote technologies as you're testing. It it will pull up um, you know, is this a is this a IIS server? Is it using uh, JScript? Is it using uh, Google Analytics? Is it using right? It'll it'll try to identify those in an iconic uh, form, uh, no pun intended, that you can click on and then drop down and see what these different technologies are. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a very nice way of doing a little bit of recon as you're as you're doing the early parts of your test in a, in a kind of visual way. Okay, uh, and and I, and I have a non-security thing that I like Chrome over Firefox for. Firefox changed their default search engine to Yahoo. Do you know what the default search engine in Chrome is? Google. Bing. Oh, Google. I was going to say DuckDuckGo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You can change, by the way, for everybody out there who's in browser land of happiness, you can change your default search engine on just about anything. You just have to go find the setting. Yep. Um, so there you go. DuckDuckGo. Go DuckDuck. Duck. So this next one in Security Deathmatch that uh, I came up with was based on... Uh, some threads I was reading on Twitter, which were kind of interesting. Uh, so, tweet. agent versus agentless. Generic. Take it wherever direction you like, but argue either agent or agentless. Joff, you pick on this one, man. Joff, over to you. Um, okay, let's argue from the perspective of uh, host-based protections, endpoint protections. Um, I would argue agent. Uh, in, in favor of agentless in that you gain much more visibility into what the endpoint is doing um, and that in the corporate world today, at least presently, there's still a very heavy presence of um, PCs that are um, actively running um, some non-browser-based applications and, and that, that the registry and all the rest of the things on the Windows box actually matter, so you need that agent visibility. However, with the um, merge... Uh, with the... Um, Technology moving forward to um, mobile API, J uh, RESTful, JSON-based uh, API kind of space. Um, I think the need to have agent on on the endpoints these days is actually diminishing. Um, so there's my start. So he just argued both points. I, this he, is he security did. death match. match. It's supposed to so, be a match to the death job. So, but we agent, love each other, man. Take oh, a no. side. So, <laughs> so agent less, right? Yeah. Because who wants to add more software to your endpoints that are potentially more vulnerable and are listening on freaking network services? <laughs> he wins. He wins. He totally wins. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you were going with that one, Paul, but sorry. And who wants to argue with their endpoint, your, your desktop team, about installing I, agents? I, I try not to argue with my endpoint. Yeah. <laughs> I argue with my endpoint every freaking day. <laughs> oh, you mean your endpoint's not a mo metaphor for, and argue is not a metaphor for, okay, never mind. <laughs> no, it's not, Larry. Not everything is a metaphor for that. <laughs> it's not? <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's okay, it. ready? Show next show one. It. Security death match. Round 27. Cyber war versus Fuck. not cyber war. Not cyber war. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> where's, what? Where's You're supposed to pick a side. Where's Space Road? Is it <laughs> <laughs> Can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. So, cyber war. I'm picking cyber. Uh, war. First of all, not what? cyber sex, cyber war. First of all, <laughs> the word cyber is massively overused and abused, and uh, I'm so sick of hearing it. The other thing is, cyber war is giving given much too much lip service in the media right now, and every, everybody thinks it's like sexy, romantic, blah, blah, blah. The, the, the truth of the matter is there are real things going on, and there are real things going on in uh, the, the land of Internet in terms of attack, defense, that we do have to pay attention to. Attention to. Uh, to use a blanket statement such as cyber war um, is uh, painting it with a way too broad a strokes, uh, and uh, I'm just kind of sick of hearing it, uh, to be honest. Uh, but cyber war is real. Um, it's here to stay. Um, we do have nation state based actors that are active and we are dealing with it on an active basis. Um, we just need not to glorify it. All right. Not cyber war. It's not cyber war. It's war. It's a war on many fronts. I'm sorry. It's, it's it happens to be in a digital medium it's it's still war it's just not land based and it's not humans fighting humans it's bits fighting bits so it's it's war it's not cyber war i think we just argued the same point <laughs> again <laughs> we're, we're very right, you ready you ready sneakers versus war games oh oh shit he went there oh, that's right i did <laughs> <laughs> all right all right. uh, <laughs> I'm taking sneakers. Okay. All right. Point you're, if you haven't seen both those movies, you're automatically disqualified. <laughs> seen, uh, or if you haven't seen both of those movies this week. That's right. Okay, I don't think I have. I've seen War Games, but not Sneakers. So, so, I don't so, so, he, so he's going to take War Games, and I'm taking Sneakers. <laughs> disqualified. Okay, disqualified. Right. I, I, I take War Games. Um... Yeah, again, a nice piece of uh, Hollywood over uh, uh, emphasis on um, you know a nice piece of what for Ali Sheedy? What <laughs> is that? What you were implying, Joffre? <laughs> Matthew Broderick, he's from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that why? <laughs> yeah, it's all about Matthew Broderick. No, 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 no. They went too far, as they always do in these movies. You know, I, one of the Joff, wait, can you can you say Whopper for us? Uh, Whopper. It's a Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> can you get one of those to play a now, game? <laughs> now, now, Joff, can you get a Whopper at Hungry Jack's or Burger King? Uh, no, you'd have to get that at Hungry Jack's. <laughs> do you have to fight a kangaroo in order to get it? Is no, that... it's made of kangaroo. Oh, uh, Yes, you do, and it's going to be a street fight, and there's going to be an, another kangaroo involved. So if you get in between them, you're going to get kicked in the head. Gotcha. Yeah. Same advice. Got that? Sage yeah. advice. So don't, no, don't get in between them. That's the sage advice. If you see two kangaroos going at it, Find your drop bear and your hoop snake, and you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Drop, you better run the way. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't seen sneakers. I have not seen sneakers. Well, if I have, I've forgotten about it. But I haven't wow. seen sneakers. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, you wow, prefer man. the net? Is that what you're saying? It's so dated. <laughs> so, so on my, it, it, uh, I'm gonna uh, sneakers. Yes, maybe sneakers. a little bit over the top, but when I ask pe when people ask what I do for a living, I tell them uh, I'm a penetration tester. I do s computer security. I say, "Have you ever seen the movie Sneakers?" And I'm finding over the last five years or so that a lot of people have not seen Sneakers, and in fact, because like us, it's old. It is. <laughs> it is. And um, when I say I say so, basically, what I do is like Sneakers. But with more computers. You remember that line, Robert Redford, in, in the beginning of the movie? Uh, he sh he's standing at the bank after their first job there, and the the yes. teller is cutting him a check. I don't get paid quite enough. And, or something. No, and yeah. she says, "So you break into people's places to tell them how you broke into people's places?" And he says, "It's a living." And she says, "It's not a very good one." Well. That's changed. That's changed. That's <laughs> changed. <laughs> and I say that to people. I said, you know, so there's that scene in the beginning. Mm. And yeah, it's it's a good one. And that's what okay. I do. I, I break into people's stuff to tell them how I broke into their stuff so that they can fix it. And then I walk away and I come back and do it again next year because <laughs> they didn't fix their stuff. But yeah, anyway. that happens, sadly, all too often. Yep. And, and you start thinking about some of the things that they did in that movie between stealing IDs and the physical pen test and engaging with all of those systems. Um, 
you start seeing that in all sorts of real world type of stuff now. Maybe some of those they were a little bit ahead of their time, um, and even from the point of having the black box like an answering machine that can decode everything, um, just go to the NSA for that. I mean, uh, those things are starting to see their way into our desktop stuff to be able to decode everything. So they are, they are indeed. So sneakers, sneakers, it is. <laughs> Somebody give Paul <laughs> shot. Okay. All right. Next one, Paul. Oh, uh, running out of steam, Paul. Come and on. And, bring then, we, bring and, some then, and then I got to make another set of drinks before we bring our, our guests yes. on for stories. Um, I like this one. PHP versus .NET. <laughs> From take, a security perspective, not yep. I'm taking, developing I'm perspective. I'm taking .NET. Oh, he beat me to it. Okay, so... <laughs> From a security pers- perspective, if PHP like is um, ass, is good for pen testers. <laughs> yes, is um, absolute suicide most of the time. Um, too many kitties are working with PHP, I think, um, and not really even exercising the security features that are barely existent. Um, there are some there. Um, they they do have some session management, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, they do have some things, but there has been. Um, well, a litany of, of um, boundary-based um, overflow stuff in PHP that's just hard to ignore and uh, makes it um, kind of difficult to work with. And if I were choosing a project, again, you know, we're going to probably agree on this. If I was choosing a project uh, from ground up that was a web-based project, I would not choose PHP, to be honest. Um, I would probably go with one of the more modern frameworks. I'm a bit partial to Django myself because it's Python-based. Uh, but, yeah, PHP is... Not one that I would argue for, and I'm just not even going to try. Okay. So, Joff, to that, uh, university space is huge on developing their own stuff in PHP because it's, you know, it's, easy. What, what a, it's easy, and that's what a lot of the students do for their projects. Well, they, they easy, do it, but they, they stand it low up. Low barrier they go to in. entry. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I would argue there's a f- I have not done anything in .NET, but I've pen tested the heck out of a lot of stuff in .NET. And I'd argue that .NET is relatively bar- low barrier to entry to get into, especially in, in university for developing. But on a default install of something that you're going to deploy a .NET application on, that, that I, I really hate to say Microsoft did anything right, but they did something right. I mean, that's tight. To get around a lot of the cross-site scripting, SQL injection, any of that type of stuff on some .NET stuff out of the box is... It's a challenge. Yeah, so what, what you end up having to do, and I agree with you, I've done some pen testing on .NET, um, the developer themselves has to end up shooting themselves in the foot, yeah. usually, and they have to try they to, have to do try that. They hard. And so, you know, it being out of the box relatively secure is, is great, versus the counter-argument that PHP, to actually secure it while you're developing, you have to put in the effort. Yep. Um, it's not secure out of the box, and so... I think there are best practices with PHP that are out there, and people can put in that effort. It's just a whole lot more work. Um, so, um, it, it, you know, uh, I, I I have to, you know, agree that the .NET is a better approach out of the box. It really does. Uh, it does what people ought, you know, ought to. It does what ought to have been done by a lot of these other frameworks. And there are others catching up as well. They're doing very similar things. Like I said, I went with Django. Django's pretty secure out of the box. Um, I don't know how the Ruby frameworks. Um, oh, I forgot the name of it. What's the big Ruby web framework, guys? Uh, Nobody uses it. Don't worry. Oh yeah, they do. <laughs> I've, had to, I've had to deal with it, and it's uh, it's quite painful to uh, to to deal with. Ruby, on anyway. Rails. Ruby on Rails. Rails, yeah. Rails got very very popular, but I hope it gets unpopular soon. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you know, I don't have you, opinions you, or anything. You, you know that the Metasploit project is the world's largest Ruby project, aside from Rails. I do know that, and I, honest to God, and I hope HD is listening. <laughs> I, honest to God, wish that Metasploit gets ported to Python. <laughs> oh, back to Python, you mean? It, well, I guess that is right, right? If Python had been more mature at the time, it might have stayed there. But um, yeah, yeah. R- Ruby seems completely foreign to me. It's like to me, it's like reading French, where you have to put the the verb in front of the noun. I, syntax, verb. Yeah, syntax is just seems syntactically. Really I have a tremendously hard time with Ruby. It's 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 not an easy language. I guess if you keep doing it over and over and over and over, like you know, like anything, yeah. it becomes second nature. But uh, it's it's a tough one. But anyway, I think we went off the rails. 
from Web Framework. <laughs> I see what you did there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. That was bad. Okay, so with that was the first incarnation of Security Deathmatch. Good job, Larry and Joff. Thanks for playing. Yo, you thank each you. win uh, a short break when we come back for the next segment. I win a short break. That's all I get. That's all you get. Okay, so we'll be right back. Joff, at least you get a break. I got to go make drinks. <laughs> 